Hello YouTube and Mr. Forks, welcome back to the Maya basic training series. Long time overdue, I think, and shortly following this will be the Encore training series, which I know lots of you are waiting for. So where are we up to? We are on rendering. We've created a sequence, not this sequence, but I've just quickly created a sequence in which we have a box that moves. Oh yes, guys, I have really pushed the boat out this time. And basically, what you want to do to render, you want to cr first of all create a camera. So I'm going to press this button here in our rendering shelf. And I want it to look at the box. There's a few ways I can do that, but I want it just to really quickly look at the box. So what I'm going to do is hit spacebar, and that brings up multiple views. And in this view, I want this to look through our camera. Now, I, you won't, but I have the camera already positioned. So what I want to do is go on to Panels, Perspective, and I want to choose the camera I just created. Not the camera I made earlier, because you won't have that, but the new camera. So you're going to click on Camera 1, but I'm going to click on Camera 2. And basically, oh my god, what's happened? Basically, the camera is now looking at nothing. Why? because it just is just the default position it's in the middle on the origin and we're going to go to frame 48 down here in the uh, timeline and you may not be able to see that you may only be able to see 24 but just grab this handle and drag it all the way up to 48 that's the default length we can change that by just double clicking in here and typing say 80 type 80 in there like that and now what we want to do is in this panel we're going to select this view and press view and we're going to frame all what does that do that frames the object so if we had a few other objects it would just make sure that everything in the scene is now visible by the camera and we've only got one thing so it's just gonna front on view to this square now because we're actually looking through the camera any movements or rotations we do, remember hit the spacebar to go into this viewport any things we change will be altering the camera and you can see what I mean if uh, we have a look if we change this view, um, sorry re um, yeah, p panels, perspective just a random perspective you can see that if we alter this view, so click in this view to go into it when we move our camera you can see that the camera is being updated in there and I actually want the camera to zoom out a bit so that we can see the entire movement like that and if we just scrub here you can see that from frames 1 to 48 it moves what we can even do is go to frame 80 grab the box hit W for the move tool move it over a bit and hit S to set a new keyframe and you can see it now moves twice now what is rendering I mean you're watching a tutorial on rendering and so far I've just told you about a cube and making a cube viewable by camera which has little to do with rendering but camera is important so I thought I would quickly cover it rendering is where you basically it's the exportation of what you've created to an external format platform what it actually means is to render something it will bear in, take into account and mathematically calculate all the lighting how the light refracts defracts how everything moves the physics of all the scene that you've the complicated scene that you've been working on that will be far more complicated than a box and then creating a flat image or a video that you can then take to an editing software system and create a film, like maybe an animated film, or take it into something like Adobe After Effects and create some motion graphics if you've created some 3D text that you want to use. If you don't know how to create 3D text, I've got a tutorial for that. That should be my uh, catchphrase. I should be like, uh, I should say something and then just be like, I've got a tutorial for that. Um, it wasn't funny, but I just thought it was actually quite a good catchphrase. There, there wasn't a joke. It was... 
just thought it was quite good. Now someone's going to nick it. Oh well. So how do we actually go about getting this cube that is now moving into a different piece of software? Well, what we're going to do, make sure we're on our rendering shelf. And we've got a few options here. We've got this first one, which basically, if you click it, it's just going to give you a preview of exactly what's going to be exported, which is nice, but not necessary. Well, it is. Um, just to make sure we've got this viewport selected. This is the camera that we want to export. We can see that it says camera 2, which is what we want. And we're going to go into our rendering, and we're going to press this button, which, if we look in the help bar, we can see it says render settings window. And we're going to click that. Now if you want a sequence, this is where you want to look at it. You see it says frame slash animation, which gives you a few options on how it's going to name all the frames. If you want a single frame, select one of the first two. If you want multiple frames, select one of the bottom two. You can select these others, but I would stick to either the top two or the bottom two. We want an actual sequence, so we're going to go name dot extension multi frame. Basically what that means is that because I've chosen PNG it's going to call it whatever we want to call it dot PNG and then a number. You can change these. I like to use PNG because it really um, quietly uses alpha channels which basically means because we've just got a square it won't export a black background. What will it, what will it do is it will just export the box on a see-through background so you can overlay it on top of some footage or something like that. So we're going to go for PNG which is uh, here. If I'm working on other software I like to use RPF but this PNG is nice for my frame padding we don't need to worry about that. And in the frame range we can choose which frame it's going to end by. Um, let's say Let's just go up to 60. Our renderable camera, remember we're working with this camera, camera 2. You might be working on camera 1. By default, it will be perspective. So make sure you choose the camera you want, which is camera 2. Alpha channel, remember that was so we can get some transparency, meaning we can just overlay it on a piece of footage and it won't have this black background. Z depth is very handy, but not necessary for now. I'll cover that in a future tutorial. But I can't use my catchphrase. I have a tutorial for that because because uh, I don't I don't have a tutorial for that. Now in our presets, this is basically the image size or resolution. If you're working in HD, then I'm sure you might know it's 1920 by 1080 or 1900. Sorry, 1920. Oh my god, I'm so confused. I need to know everything, but now I don't. 1K, 2K, they're just different resolutions as well. For now, I'm going to go HD. It was 1920. I was right. We're going to go 720, though. HD 720. So if you're working at 720p, then this is the one to use. The pixel aspect, keep that ticked. Resolution, 72 is perfect. And we want to keep that in pixels. We don't want to work in centimeters because we're working on video. So it's not necessary. Pixel aspect ratio, set that to 1, especially with HD. If you're working with something like SD, then you might be, have um, 720 by 576 um, pixels to the ratio 1.33 or something like that. But we just want it set to be 1. And the render options we don't need to play with. Render using, unless you've got some fancy hardware installed into your Mac Pro or Windows 7 machine just leave it as software and that basically means it's going to use the software to work out everything and not external graphic devices or anything like that master layer just leave that Maya software so anti-aliasing options um, what is anti-aliasing basically if I go into my pre-prepared tab yes I am prepared this is with no aliasing really you can see it's very jaggedy and it's trying to create this diagonally smooth line and it's really just not doing very well whereas this has blurred the edges a bit to try and create a smoother line now if you actually go further away from your screen squint your eyes a bit then you'll see that the second one the one below looks um, looks like a straight line whereas this does look like a jagged edge 
So you want to set anti-aliasing to highest quality. See how I recovered? I was about to say high, but I changed that to highest quality. Change the shading, max shading. We don't actually have any lights, so that's not necessary. We're going to be looking at lighting and texturing in the next tutorial. Maybe texturing, I'm not sure, but definitely lighting. Motion blur is quite important, basically, because we've got a moving object. Um, to avoid something called strobing, which is basically where you have got a moving object, but because there's no motion blur, it looks like it's stuttering. You often find that with some IMAX films, because they're so beautifully imaged, they just have no motion blur, and then it looks stuttery. Check the uh, opening shot of uh, The Dark Knight. Let's turn motion blur on. That basically will blur motion, give it a much smoother feel. We don't need ray tracing because we don't have um, shadows. But if you do, turn on ray tracing. We're going to turn it on anyway. And that looks good. Now that we're happy with our sequence and everything, we can just go ahead and press this batch render button, which is this colourful looking button right here. And batch render means we're going to render all the frames. Maya is a little bit more complicated than a lot of the others for rendering. If I'm honest, it's the most complicated rendering system. If we go to the file, you can see that these files, the PNG ones right here, are being created as we speak. There you go. Bam. Um, so I hope that was helpful. If you want to know how to then get these files into a program like Adobe After Effects, just give that a good Google search and it will tell you, just search how to import an image sequence into Adobe After Effects. So I hope this was helpful. Um, I hope you know now, now know how to export. Play around with the settings. If you don't get the results you want first time, have another play around. And if there's a specific file or type you want, then Google the best workflow for it, and that will help you. There is no such thing as an easy question, but they are the easiest to answer. I hope this tutorial has been helpful, and we'll get on to part five or six at a later date. So thank you for watching, and I'll speak to you guys soon.